So good morning, and honestly, what a good morning it is. I'm sure you can tell by the sunshine on my face that today is going to be a really good day. And look what we've got. It's the first time I've used the DBX as basically our uh, support card. And oftentimes I'll rock up to a, a test day or a race day in something massively impractical like the GT3. And I'm trying to wedge all my bags and stuff in there. But with this thing, I mean, everything's just, I'm not used to practicality like this. I know most people probably are, but I seem to make uh, life hard for myself. Also, speaking of sunshine, check out that. This is what the custom lid was all about. Unless you've got direct sunlight on it, you can't really see this contrasting exposed blue carbon. But uh, yeah, the guys at Image Design Customs did such a great job on that. So anyway, I haven't actually introduced where we are. Welcome to Silverstone. And today, and I'm nerding out on this so heavily, is that everything packed up? Yeah, today we're in the posh pits. Behold the wing of Silverstone. And the reason this is a big deal is because these are effectively the Formula One pits. Now, if you've been following the channel and the journey of Praga, so far we found ourselves in a sort of a quintessential British pit lane, which is, you know, has its character. <laughs> but today we might as well be in NASA HQ. Come and check this out. All right. <laughs> The last time you tuned in, we were in the pits of Alton Park. Beautiful picturesque circuit, but behold, look at this. This is like the mothership of British motorsport. And today we've got some proper kit here. So walk with me. The significance of today is that it's the first test day of the Brick Car Championship, which means all of the cars which are competing are here. And you'll notice the caliber of things that we'll be on circuit with. So we've now got quite a lot of GT3 cars, proper GT3, McLaren 650S GT3 car here. This is uh, run by Motus One, who brought the car down. We've got a Praga over there as well, look. And there's quite a few Pragas now. I think we've got 12 Pragas here in total, which is amazing. So we're on track with these things. So all of a sudden it's getting pretty serious. The super cool thing about Brick Car is there is a complete mixture of classes categories. So you'll have a full-on GT3 car with a high downforce car like the Praga all the way over to things like this. It's a massive mixture. So from a spectator's point of view, the grid here is so eclectic and so mixed that the racing looks brilliant out on track. Look at this. This is really serious. This is a Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo. Um, I mean, this is really serious race car stuff. I can't actually believe that I'm on the same track as these guys. And they're really properly fast. So we have to be on our game to either keep up with these things or keep out of the way of them. <laughs> Look at that. And it's still running the naturally aspirated V10 on this, only completely stripped out. Lots of aero upgrades. You won't believe this lineup. We've got all of the cars here, all the Pragas in the famous Silverstone wing. Let's give you a walk and talk through the amazing lineup that we've got. Uh, it's so cool seeing them all together for the first time. So I think in this garage alone, there's probably eight Pragas. There's a couple of other cars ran by different teams. But here they are. And they, I mean, you know, obviously, fundamental platform are all identical, but when they apply liveries to each car, they just look totally different. But what is interesting, all of the engineers you see here, the whole point of this test day is when we come back, both Miles and myself and every other driver in these cars feeds back and gets the car set up to their specific driving style. And there's a fine balance, isn't there, when you've got two drivers in one car, both drivers have a different driving technique. Thankfully, Miles and I are fairly similar in sort of proportions and I believe driving style, which helps a lot. But all of these guys are here working to set the car up for the race tomorrow. So come and check out our car. That looks well. So for anyone tuning in now, um, we were really honored to partner with um, famous car designer Frank Stephenson, who designed the livery for our car, which is why it looks pretty wild. Um, right now we've got all of the panels off. Now you would really class a Praga as a prototype car, um, meaning it's, it's just designed to go racing. That's all, it's, there's no road application with this car. It's not based on a road car. Um, and as a result, there is a lot of development R&D that goes into it, a huge amount of feedback from the drivers to get these cars up to scratch. Hence, when we come in, there's a swarm of engineers that gets on it like this. We've got laptops plugged into ECUs. We've got brake bias changes, tire temperatures, 
brake traces, everything's being uh, checked. But look at this. I mean, if this doesn't say thoroughbred race car, I don't know what does. This is engineering porn right here. Look at it, it's all billet. It's beautiful. And this really is what separates a sort of prototype racing car from a racing car which is developed around a road car. I mean, you can tell this whole thing is one carbon cell, which makes it nice and safe, but it's very rigid. Suspension movement is minimal, but honestly, it's an amazing thing. And I'm still having difficulty trying to share with you, the audience, what downforce is like. It's a really strange thing. Basically, you've got so much cornering grip that you step out of the car with neck ache. That's the sort of thing because your head, the car's capable of, of cornering it at 3G. So, in effect, there's some corners where your body weight weighs three times the amount. So when you step out, you're shattered. Anyway, let's go check out some more cars. This thing in particular, this is something that's definitely gonna hassle us on, on the track. Look at that. This is a full-blown Nissan GT3 car. I mean, a proper GTR, GT3 car. The polar power of this thing is outstanding and it's a big boy thing. So you either don't want to be in the way of it or you want to be proficient in getting out of the way of it. Or ideally, uh, we just need to be really good drivers and make it not be a problem for us. So let's see how it goes. But look at the, for context, look at the size of this wing. <laughs> the aero on it is unbelievable. You know, on this channel, we like to set a spot of context. How's that for you? Is that giving you an idea of, these are just four of the slicks which are going on to the GTR. It's absolutely colossal. I'll just sort of, just sort of stand there for you for uh, our favorite strap line on this channel, the spot of context. Yeah, not the best session that. We've got um, we got a problem with the throttle sticking. Um, I know that might sound a bit extreme. It's not as extreme as it sounds, but the um, oh, it's frustrating. These things have. Um, it's hard to share what these cars are like because they are prototype cars and there's a lot of feedback and development and engineering that has to go into them to make them work properly i guess clues in the name that they are prototypes if you lift off the throttle a hundred percent it's still accelerating for about one second which doesn't sound a lot but at the speed that it's doing one second when you found your braking point basically pushes you way past your braking point um, so, yeah, I come in to get that fixed. Engineers are all over it now. That, so the damper is there for a reason, but yeah. today we're going to try it, well now, try it without, see okay. if it fixes it. So the damper, how will that impact throttle feel? 
without it. Well, if you imagine the throttle is obviously on a spring, isn't it? Yeah. And it's leaving at the bottom. Yeah. The only resistance now, if you will, the only force you have to overcome is the spring. Is the spring. Okay. But the damper is there to so basically stop you from being able to achieve like 100% throttle okay. in, the heart, in you know, like in a fraction of a second. Sure. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Equally, on the return, it, it cleans up the the, the uh, throttle pedal return as well. So right. just to say, if you come out the throttle, yeah. it, if you didn't have the damper, it would just switch the throttle off instantly. Sure. Um, so this is just basically, if you had, if you could see a throttle trace, yeah. If you had it without, it'd be like an on and off switch, but with it's more gradually up, gradually yeah. down. That's Whereas the way it is. This will be. This will be like on or off. So I'm going to try that, see yeah. how it is. See how it feels. Um, if it's obviously no good, then I'll work back on and work with something else. But this yeah. is what we're going to try. Test day. Test day. It's all in the word, man. All right, that's the other thing. Truck life. When I was a kid, my dad used to take me to watch various events. And I would come to events like this, and I'd walk through the paddock and see these massive trucks and think, who are the, who are the people using these things? Like, how do you get involved in that world? I always thought it was such an extreme measure of motorsport when you had a lineup of trucks like that. And now here we are today. And uh, this is such a YouTube thing, but I feel really blessed. <laughs> Honestly, I feel so lucky to be here involved in this level of motorsport. This was a dream to be involved, to turn up to a racetrack supported by a team with trucks like this. Super cool. Anyway, Miles is out on track, so we're going to go and find some sort of vantage point and uh, see if we can spot him hunting an apex or two. There he is. Going for it. Looking well. He's looking quick. I tell you what, Frank was right, you know. That wrap, I mean, it looks fast when it's stationary, but when it's dynamic, when it's actually moving, it looks like a bullet through the air. Let's go up there. There he is again. He's going well. He's going well. Judging by the fact that he's still out, would suggest that the issues have been resolved. I really think that the uh, the throttle sticking yeah. was actually the damper, so that's gone yeah. now and it's completely gone. Right, you've just got to be a, a little bit more, right more forward, just be delicate. A very accurate, a bit delicate, or very delicate. Okay, um, but yeah, you don't get that surge now. Back out for the drive since we've removed the damper off the throttle pedal. I can already tell it's lighter. Yeah. Thanks, bro.
just relearning the car because we don't have any, we have no pressure on the throttle anymore. Yeah, yeah. It feels like it's totally hollow. Yeah. So completely relearning how it's, yeah. like how much the throttle application is is needed, but it's like night and day difference in session. As in not, it's not sticking anymore. So well, it's good. Challenge now will be for Setterton. Do we put it? Back? Yeah, no, I, th I prefer it like that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Jimmy Broadbent. Yes, hello, mate. Good to see you, man. There you go, my How's things? <laughs> yeah, good. Everything good? All right. Um, just getting used to driving, again, what is a quite ridiculous car around <laughs> it's ridiculous. Silverstone. Can you believe it's actually happening? No, not really. I mean, I should probably, I think I get those little thoughts and I'm going down the straight. I'm like, should I be having a sport now? Maybe I should <laughs> store that for later. But, um, yeah. Yeah, mad that it is happening. Definitely. Brilliant. Well, anyone who's been living under a rock and hasn't followed Jimmy's channel, there's a, a link below. And Jimmy's the sim pro of the UK. I think the obvious question is, have you found any correlation? Is there anything you can transfer from sim to reality? Well, I think like the easiest answer is uh, sim racing gives you like a running start. Yeah. It's like, um, I think there's a guy called Dave, Dave Burrell who said it the best. It's like getting like a treadmill. Uh -huh. You sort of start sure. getting fit. Yeah. And then you get into the real thing. Oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> um, but I'd say things like racing lines, you sure. know, sort of yeah. how to brake. Yes. Um, how to overtake as well. Uh -huh. That's all the things you can learn in the sim yeah, really absolutely. easily. And um, of course, track layout. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I mean, angle seat for me was a bit nerve wracking because I've never driven there in the right, sim okay. before. Yeah. Drive here low, so I know where I'm going. So I'm up to speed like that. So it's really so handy. Cool. Brilliant, mate. And so, how's it all going? Like, how's testing going? Have you had any issues? We're pretty transparent with our audience. We haven't had the smoothest of ride. Yeah, yeah. But the car's getting there now, and when it clicks, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've had a few teething issues, you yeah. know, um, just kind of small things. We have having to take the steering wheels a little bit, to the connection to the hub's a little bit weird, so right. yeah. sometimes it doesn't change gear properly, but otherwise, as you say, when it's all swimming, you know, it takes its mega. The, the, the confidence it inspires is, is mad. I'm a massive yeah. fan of it. Super cool. So you, your first race is tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Mate, I, so I can't do it because my co-driver, Miles, is selfishly racing another car in the same race. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I can't do it tomorrow, which is, is a shame because I would have loved to have raced here, but we do have an Enduro here, don't we, in July, I think. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. will be nice. So. I'll make sure to turn him on the way by if I, if <laughs> I see him. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, he is in a touring car, I think. Okay. So that'll be a bit of fun. I hope he's kind to us. <laughs> yeah, me too. You might be able to use his toe. Yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's spring out, but uh, no, it's great to uh, see you here. My audience, when they found out you were here, were like, you got to get Jimmy on the channel. I was like, okay, let's do it. So here he is. Uh, if you have any, like, future questions that you want to know from Jimmy, let me know and I'll, I'll grab him just after he's jumped out of a car or something. So, mate, best of luck in the season. It's Thank great you. to meet you and I look forward to uh, catching up with you after and before every race. Cheers, cool. Man. Cheers, dude. Another second and a half out of your lap time. Okay. And you only did 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Second and a half, okay. That's good. Yeah, that's good. That's progress. That's good news. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the uh, there's so much traffic you can't yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you can't string right. together a lap. Yeah. Like you don't know if you would have had a good lap or not. Yeah. Tell me you got that. <laughs> I've got it on the onboard. Um, bit of an incident. If it was during a race, I'd call it a raging incident, but. Just had a Praga come out of nowhere and dive up the inside of a, a McLaren 650S GT3. Bit of an incident, big spin off. Caught some uh, flames coming out of the back of the, the GT3. I'm sure it's okay, but red flag, hence us coming in early. But yeah, someone's not gonna be happy. Yeah, well done, man. That was good. Okay, now. My day was exciting and exhausting in equal measure. I've come away a uh, euphoric wreck, as it were. <laughs> uh, if you've been following the journey of the, the Praga story, this is a, a very familiar sentence. But once again, it's very difficult to convey the extremity of these cars. G meter reading, whatever it is, unless you felt it, you don't really know. Like just how hard you can break, how hard you can corner. Uh, absolutely amazing thing. So you come away from a test day, which really is more intense than a race day. Because a race day, you have your half an hour session. 
on a on a test day, you have three or four half an hour sessions. And as such, you've, you've basically done three races in a day. That's what's happened here. And that's why I look mildly deflated, but uh, the smile glands are still on point because it's awesome. So, yeah, incredible thing. I'm gonna have to put in some time at the gym. And I know I'm not just, just saying that, like, I genuinely, genuinely am. It's uh, the amount of forces, the, the Praga, um, what is it? 380 horsepower, 640 kilograms, and 1,000 kilograms of downforce. And it's capable of cornering at 3G, but we have no power steering, no ABS, no traction control. So you're managing all of that yourself. You are the, the organic ECU controlling all of these things, keeping it in check. And um, there's just a lot to manage. But the biggest thing from a fitness point of view is under quite heavy aero load, because you've got no power steering, it gets really heavy, like really heavy, to a point that you wouldn't believe it heavy. And you get arm pump, and your arms get quite stiff, and your, your shoulders get quite tight, and then your neck kind of loads up because of the G-force, and then you got immediate direction change. So everything that you just had on this side immediately transitions to that side, and you do that for half an hour. That happens a lot. Then, um, yeah, you come out baked and smiling heavily. Very, very cool, so. Anyway, gonna load up the DBX now, head on home. As always, thanks so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.